Hello, beloved of the Lord. Welcome back to the study of the book of Ephesians as we have been continuing verse by verse studying this amazing, glorious treasure box that God has given us, the book of Ephesians. So I encourage you to take note again. We are studying the Word of God, word by word, concept by concept, to understand what is it, what it is that God has given unto us. A tremendous, a tremendous inheritance. So again, uh, let's just start with a word of prayer and thank the Lord for this time, this opportunity. Father, we, we are th- grateful to you in Jesus' precious name for all that you have done for us through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We honor you today and thank you for your glorious work, for this amazing, glorious redemption. And we give you all the glory in Jesus' most precious name. We pray, amen. Well, let's go to the scripture right away. And we are in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse uh, 17. And we're reading from NASB, New American Standard Bible. It says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. Now, again, uh, we've, we want to look at all these words in Greek, the God in Greek is, the word is theos, or theos, uh, <clears throat> means the supreme divine being, the true living and personal God. Lord, we talked about Lord in our last lesson, curious. And that means master or owner. He who has absolute ownership and power. Uh, Jesus is referred to some 10 times as Savior and 700 times in the New Testament as Lord. And again, 7,000 times that word Lord in Greek, Jehovah. The translation, Greek translation of the Old Testament in Septuagint, uh, 7,000 times in the Old Testament. Jesus, the word Jesus in Greek is Jesus, which is uh, from the Hebrew word Yeshua. That means Jehovah saves or Jehovah's salvation. The word Father. Pater, God is our Father, and uh, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are a member of his family, and joiner with Christ Jesus. Jesus is our older brother. And here, A.T. Robertson says, the Father of glory, the God characterized by Glory, the Shekinah. In, in, in uh, the book of Acts of the Apostle, chapter 7, verse 2, it says, And Stephen said, listen to me, brothers and fathers, the God of glory, again, that phrase. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 8, The wisdom which none of the rulers of this age has understood, for if they had understood it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory the Father and the Lord of glory. And so, the Father would be usually followed by the name of a person. However, a metaphorical use of Father is found, we'll see it in James chapter 1, verse 17, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. Actually, let's look at these uh, verses. James chapter 1, verse 7 says, Every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above, Coming down from the Father, here is Father of lights, with whom there is a variation or shifting, there's no variation or shifting shadow. Father of lights, Father of glory. That means God is light. God is glorious. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort. Again, Father means the creator, the source. God is the source of all mercies. God is the source of all glory and praise. 
Uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 9. Furthermore, we had earthly fathers to discipline us, and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the Father of spirits and live? Again, here it says, Father of spirits. Uh, again, we are talking about uh, God is the source, the source of glory, the source of mercies, the, the source of all spirit beings. God is the one who has it in him and then he deposits it or creates it, that which is in him. Glory is in him and that glory he deposits, father of glory. He glorifies us. Uh, and so on. Uh, Paul says, the Father of glory may give unto you, may give you, didomai, that word in, in Greek, uh, didomai, let's do that, let's, let's grab a new page here, uh, <clears throat> give you, didomai, means to give based on a decision of the will of giver, no merit of recipient, and thus can carry the ideas of bestow or grant. Paul prays that God might give the spirit of wisdom and revelation to Ephesians. Now here, that word wisdom is the word Sophia. Sophia, common name in Sweden, Sophia. It apply the knowledge of God's will to the life situations. Wisdom enables one to perceive reality accurately. And then uh, not just head knowledge, but an experimental knowledge. Knowing, understanding, and knowing what to do. Wisdom is the ability to judge correctly and to follow the best course of action. So when I face a situation, then I know what to do, when to do, and how to do it. Not just having knowledge, but knowing how to apply that knowledge to that situation perfectly based on the knowledge of God, based on knowledge and understanding. So... The wisdom that we talk about is not a human wisdom. Human wisdom is obtained through experiences. That's why uh, the older people have more experience and so they have more wisdom about matters because they face the situation over and over again and they know how that works out for the best. So they obtain wisdom or, or we call it a, 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 a natural wisdom throughout the years, throughout experiences. But godly wisdom is imparted to us supernaturally by God. James says that. He says, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask the Lord. Now notice in uh, James chapter 3, but the wisdom from above is first pure, then peace, loving, gentle, reasonable, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial, free of hypocrisy. So this, these are the characteristics of a wisdom that comes from, from God. So when people say, hey, I don't know what to do in this situation, and you have an idea, does it have all these characters in it? Peace, loving, pure, gentle, reasonable, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial, free of hypocrisy. You know, many believers in Iran are facing tremendous persecution. And the Bible says when they persecute you in one town, then seek or run to the other, go to another place. And this is the situation with many of them. But some of them, their lives are not in danger, just they're, they're, they're very limited in actions. They're limited in words and so on and so forth. So many of them call us and they say, Pastor, we don't know what to do. Leave Iran, seek refuge in another country. What shall we do? Well, I tell them, with the situation as it is right now, with the refugee status all around the world, it is not wise for you 
to seek refuge in another place unless your life is really in danger and it's between living a bad situation versus dying. Well, living bad situation, you know, even in prison is better than death. So, but I always tell them, to seek God and, and know what God is telling you. Because my, this is my natural wisdom and partially my understanding spiritually of the condition of the earth and knowing what would happen to somebody who doesn't speak the language, leave the country, come to a foreign country, faces many challenges. But what does God tell you? God may place you in a situation that is all good all around. And that I do not know, but that you will know if you, as, as James says in chapter 1, anyone who lacks wisdom, let him ask, but let him ask in faith. So wisdom is really the, the engine that, that, that runs us smoothly and takes you to a place where you need to be. And the Bible says in Colossians chapter 2 that God, the Jesus, in whom are all hidden, in whom are hidden, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So again, he is curious. He is our Lord. And he has all wisdom. And he will impart it to you if you ask it by faith and seek his mind about the matter. Now again, this is uh, one of Paul's very important prayers. You know, we, we have done a studies uh, on the book of, uh, on all Paul's prayers throughout his letters. And this is one of them, very important. I oftentimes pray that for believers, for the church, that God grant them the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Apocalypsis, that word revelation, here wisdom and revelation. Let's see here. The word revelation here, apocalypsis. Apo means from, and calupto, the root of this word, means cover or conceal. So from conceal, unveiling of something hidden. Here, Paul uh, deals with God's imparting knowledge to us or wisdom, imparting wisdom, proper use of knowledge. Revelation means revealing something. You take the lid off something that is concealed, that is covered, that is hidden that is unknown. So what God does, he takes that lid off, he takes that cover off for us to see it clearly and to understand it. Remove the cover, expose to open view that which was uh, heretofore not visible, known or disclosed. Make manifest or reveal a thing previously secret or unknown. God may grant you a spirit of revelation, meaning understanding. About 12 years ago, that spirit of revelation came over me. For a period of 10 years, I would see the Bible in the light that I have never seen it before. And things just started opening up for me, understanding my spirit. But the new covenant, I received what Paul is praying here a spirit of revelation in the knowledge of God, knowledge of Jesus Christ, in his redemption, understanding the new covenant. And I've written several books about the matter. Now, when these revelations would come to me, sometimes early in the morning, sometimes I would wake up and I felt like I was in a classroom and somebody was teaching me for several hours. Sometimes I would wake up and speak out the words that I was reading in my dream. It was an amazing time. It was like a blanket that came over me. And I understood the new covenant. And when I understood the new covenant, I understood the, new, the old covenant. And Bible was opening up and still is. Revelation, apocalypsis, revealed. 
imparting knowledge of God by His Spirit. Uh, <clears throat> again, that is so important. First Corinthians chapter 2, let's go back to the Scripture. Paul says, For to us God revealed them through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, even the depth, depths of God. So, how does that happen? How does that revelation come? It comes through the Holy Spirit. Colossians says, uh, chapter 1, verse 10, so that you will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord to please Him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing, increasing in the knowledge of God. Now that is the purpose of the church. The purpose of the church is to make God known unto those who have accepted him. Unfortunately, uh, much of the church today is more of a self-involving, self-evolving, self-understanding. It's more on a self rather than understanding who God is. And so I think before we understand who we are, if we understand who God is, then we will recognize who we are. Recognition, knowledge, wisdom about who God is. And that's why we take time and go through the scripture verse by verse, word by word, understanding all the concepts, all the backgrounds of that verse, of that, of, of that revelation, so that we may get a spirit of revelation in the knowledge of him. Look at what Peter says in 2 Peter, and in chapter uh, 3, verse 18, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord. Wow, this is amazing. Grow, we can grow in the grace. Becoming gracious, understanding grace, walking by grace, and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. Grow in the knowledge. Grow in the knowledge. That's the will of God. God wants us to grow. We, we can know God personally. Why? Because we have the spirit of God is in us. And the spirit of revelation is in us. The spirit of faith is in us. The spirit of wisdom in, is, in, is in us. You know, the Bible talks about seven spirits of God. doesn't mean that God has seven spirits, but it means seven work of the Holy Spirit, seven major acts of the Holy Spirit. And that is in every believer. Uh, you know, have you noticed that if you feed your body correctly, with all that the body, nutrition that the body needs, the body functions properly. Same is with the spiritual thing. If we feed the body of Christ with a proper word, with a right word, with right teaching, with the scriptural sound teachings, it happens something to the believer's heart, becomes more hungry and thirsty for the truth. But if we give him all sweets and, 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 and cakes and you know, stuff that people want to get up and run around the church and emotional stuff talking about. If we feed the emotional stuff to make people feel good about themselves, then the emotions get up, but the spirit is down. And so that leaves a believer a, a, a wobbly, weakly. It's not strong enough. He's not strong enough to face situations in life and overcome it by faith. So we could know God. This is what Jesus said in John chapter 17. He said, this is eternal life. Oh, do you have eternal life? This is it. What is it? That they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. That's, that's the whole purpose of us not being taken up to heaven right after our conversion. Why? Because God wants us to have knowledge of him before we get to spend time with him one-on-one -on -one or in personal or near him. 
get to know God, get to know who God is and make him known unto others. Because the picture that the world has of God is an evil picture based truly, mainly upon the church. Because we are, the, the church, the world doesn't have the Bible, we do. The world cannot read the Bible, we can. I mean, they read it, they read like a storybooks. But we have the ability to know God and to make him known to mankind. And so the, the, the picture that they have of God today is a God who is judgmental, a God who seeks your money, wants your money, and so on and so forth. And, and so that's the picture they've got from the church. The church is the reason. And therefore, we need, we need to know God and make him known as he is personally. This is eternal life. We could know him increasingly. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, it says, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. Uh, that's an amazing aim here Paul has. May know him. That, that should be the... Uh, it should be the first goal of every Christian. It should be the first goal of every church. Not to build a massive building and have 20,000 different campuses and, uh, and have this and have a gym and have that. No, you know, it's all okay. It's all good. Uh, if you're happy with it, that's all good. But what I'm saying, the purpose should be make God known unto people. Teach him the truth of the Scripture so that we may know him and grow. This is, this is sanctification, growing in the knowledge of God. And as we know, we become conformed to that image. The more we know, have you, have you noticed that when you study something about nutrition, you become it. When you get to know that, hey, if I drink this juice of this vegetable, it's going to do this thing to my body, and I have you know, I have lack of uh, vitamin B or this, what do you do? You start eating stuff that helps that lack in your body. Same with the scripture. The more I find out about who God is, who Jesus is, what this redemption is all about, the more that becomes part of me. I, 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 I become conformed to that image, and that is called sanctification, the process of God, our process of us being conformed to the image of God. And then there will come a time when we know him perfectly face to face. And Paul talks about that in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. He says, we see now in part, we know in part, and prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will be done away with. When I was a child, I used to speak like a child. Think like a child, reason like a child. When I became a man, I did away with childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I will know fully, just as I also have been fully known. So again, uh, that's why we have so many division in the church, because we know in part. Uh, but God's will is for us to know more and more and grow in that knowledge of him. A spirit of revelation, Father, in the name of Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray this Paul prayers over everyone who watches this program today, over your body, over the church, that grant us a spirit of revelation in the knowledge of you. In Jesus' most precious and wonderful name we pray, amen. Hallelujah. God has blessed you with every spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And again, we want to thank all of you who are joining us, uh, studying this book together with us, and also those of you who are our partners uh, in our broadcast to the Middle East, reaching out the Muslim world. 
Tremendous things are happening through these broadcasts by God's grace, and we are so grateful both to him and to you. In Jesus' most precious name, we will see you next time. Amen.